episode of Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Rolf Klingberg, your host. Today we're going to talk a little bit about making carbon fiber tubing. Uh, if you've been watching uh, the series, uh, you know that I go to a lot of work to make custom tubing for this particular aircraft. You wonder, why all of that extra work? Why standard tubing? Well, standard carbon fiber tubing is very expensive, but the big driver is weight. Uh, by making custom tubing, I can tailor the tubing so that it is sized to carry the loads of a specific location as opposed to just a generic uh, uh, straight wall thickness tube. Well, what you see in front of me here is a tapered piece of carbon fiber cloth. It's 10 inches at one end, 20 inches at the other end. It's about uh, 7 feet long. I'm going to be using this cloth to make uh, the leading edge tubes uh, for the aircraft. These are the leading edge tubes that go on the outboard wing panels that attach to the center section. Uh, this is a chunk of the center section of the wing and the tubing I'm going to make is this tubing that goes up front. Uh, it serves two purposes. Uh, it carries uh, loads uh, from the pilot, torque loads, the pilot's hanging off the trailing edge of this thing, uh, pulling down and uh, there's a tube that goes in here that resists that force and this piece of carbon fiber tubing distributes the loads out into the skin and into the rib which has strong cap strips on it to carry those loads. Um, this tube doesn't need to be very thick in carbon fiber. Uh, this sample here near the center of the wing is uh, 40 thousandths of an inch thick or four layers. Uh, but as you go further outboard, it doesn't even have to be that thick. It can be even thinner. Uh, and that's why we have the tapered piece of cloth. So, um, by tapering the cloth, 20 inches at that end, inch and a half diameter will give me four layers that I need at that attachment point. Uh, outboard, uh, I have 10 inches, which would give me just a little over two wraps around the tube. So we have a straight taper from one end to the other end. We're going from two layers thick, 20 thousandths to 40 thousandths. And I've made some samples here to show you the types of things that you can do with fabric. If you had a piece of fabric that's cut like this, uh, you're going to get uh, one full layer, a taper, and then more layers. Let me wrap it around this stick and you can see the result. I've drawn a black line on here so that you can see how it actually wraps up. And if this were carbon fiber, this is what you would get. It runs a little short here, but you'd have one continuous layer here uh, and then tapering up to more layers at this end. Uh, that is one shape that you can do. And you're only limited by your imagination. Uh, somebody went in and did some calculations and said, Oh, I need a reinforcement at a particular point right here, and I want to distribute that load out in a particular uh, mathematical way. Uh, and you might end up with a piece of cloth that has some type of uh, curve on it like that. And if you roll that up, you can see the type of taper that you get on that. The taper goes fast at first, very fast taper, and then less taper. So uh, the rate at which this tubing uh, thickness goes down uh, it starts out slow and then it goes down really fast for that particular shape. You could have the reverse shape. You could have a shape like this that's curved the other way and you're going to get the opposite result. So we roll this one up like this and with these lines you can see what you get. The taper drops off rapidly at first and then the taper drops off not quite as quickly as you go out for it. I don't know where this would be applicable. Uh, I have nothing on my design that requires something like this, but it's something that you can do. Um, and uh, if you have a local reinforcement and you need a lot of layers locally and you want to spread that load out, well, a double taper like this would do that job. Roll that one up and you can see the end result there. There you have a constant rate of change in wall thickness from thick to thinner. Uh, so, you're really only limited by your imagination as to what you can do in terms of tailoring the wall thickness on the tubing. And this allows you to do it while you lay up the tubing, uh, instead of laying up, say, two layers and then come in later and put on local reinforcements. A little imagination, a little mathematics, and you can create custom tubing. Now you're saying, what's the big deal? Well, here's the big deal. This is five ounces of cloth here. Uh, it's going to take uh, five plus ounces of resin to wet it out six, seven ounces of resin. So by the time that we're done, we have a 12 ounce tube, three quarters of a pound. If this were straight wall thickness, it would be double that weight, it'd be 24 ounces. So two of these, I need two of these in the aircraft, uh, that's a pound and a half. 
well, if I made it just constant wall thickness or bought standard tubing, well, then it would be three pounds. And that's a pound and a half of weight that I don't need. And a pound and a half on a 100-pound aircraft is a big deal, one and a half percent. So don't carry weight you don't have to carry. Build custom, design parts of the aircraft to carry just the loads that are in those locations, nothing more and nothing less. So we're going to go to a fast forward. You're going to watch me make this piece of tubing. I'm going to wet it out first. Uh, I'm going to gather up the cloth. I'm going to apply it to the mandrel back here, which I've already prepped with the release plastic on it, and it's been sprayed with a petroleum-based release agent. I got it up on my tubing jig here, or tubing rig, and uh, you're going to watch me go through this really fast. I'm going to put on some music for you, and let's have some fun. Here we go. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together so beautiful you and me hey welcome back uh, the two leading edge tubes are done uh, it's actually the next day uh, it got slowed up uh, yesterday so we got them finished up I ran the second one at slightly lower temperatures I ran it between 150 and 170 degrees uh, and I think it came out a little bit better that there isn't so much variation on the compression of the tube from the uh, heat shrink. Uh, the surface is smoother on the outside, which is good. Uh, so lower temperatures, probably okay. Um, both tubes weigh about the same amount. Uh, one weighs 9 ounces, the other one weighs 8.9 ounces. So given the weight of the fabric and some parts of the fabric I removed that had the masking tape on them and so forth, we're getting a resin to fabric ratio of about 55-45, which is pretty much spot on uh, for a wet hand layup. Uh, pre breaks will get you in the 50-50 range, 50% resin, 50% cloth, which is considered optimum. So given that this is a wet hand layup, very, very close to optimum uh, weight ratio between resin and fabric, which is terrific. To be able to do that at home, uh, pretty slick. Um, both tubes are extremely strong for their weight. Uh, this is the thick end, four layers. It is incompressible. I, I don't feel it move at all. The other end, two layers, somewhat squishy. That's fine because ribs are going to go around here. Uh, and uh, actually the ribs are going to be, you know, there's probably only going to be 
three or four ribs along this whole length, uh, maybe once every two feet, something like that. Uh, that will support the, the roundness of the tube. Uh, plus it's going to be glued along one edge to the D tube that goes over it. Uh, so uh, this is really, really nice. Um, there's only one significant issue with uh, the processing of these particular tubes. Uh, the plastic that I'm using, uh, I'm using a polyester, which is like mylar, wrapped around the tube to provide a release surface. If you watch the other videos on making tubing, uh, you'll see how that uh, material is used and how the process works. That plastic, when uh, subjected to the higher temperatures in the oven, uh, lost its elasticity. It became brittle. And I was unable to remove the plastic from inside the tubes uh, because of that brittleness. As soon as I start to twist or push or pull, it just snaps apart and I cannot remove all the plastic from inside the tubes. Now, that doesn't make the tubes unusable. I can remove the plastic from the ends here and I can get a file in there and rough up the surface and I'll be able to bond in the fittings that I need uh, on the uh, uh, root end of these. So the tubes are entirely usable, it's just that they have plastic on the inside of them, uh, which adds a little bit of weight. And I checked that out, and each tube is heavy by about three quarters of an ounce to one ounce because of that plastic. Now that's two ounces across these two tubes, and we have the pilot's cage coming up. Uh, it could add up to four to six ounces worth of weight. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try some different materials. I have some vacuum bagging plastic, which I know uh, it provides a great release surface, as well as uh, being amenable to processing at higher temperatures. I'm going to try that. Uh, and uh, I might look into some other plastics that I can wrap around there that would uh, provide an easier release. Plus, I've been using the spray-on petroleum uh, release, uh, which works great for flat panels and so forth, but for the tubing, it doesn't seem to provide a quick enough or easy enough uh, release. I'll pro I'm probably going to revert back to wax and PVA, which is considerably more work uh, and time on processing. But if it allows me to get the plastic out of the inside of the tube, that's a big plus. We'll be saving weight and, and less processing in terms of trying to clean up the ends to uh, bond in fittings that we're going to need. So overall, uh, two tubes uh, for a total weight of about uh, 17 ounces. Not bad. Uh, just ever so slightly over one pound uh, for the two sides. Uh, this is the uh, remainder of the tubing that goes in the wing itself. So all of the tubing that I need for the wing is complete now, and I'll be moving on to making tubing for the pilot's cage, which should prove to be interesting because we're going to use a slightly different process there. I'm going to be using the um, sandwich panel style. I'm going to use a foam. I'm going to put down a layer of fiberglass, foam core, and then some carbon fiber and Kevlar on the outside to make that tubing. And we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we're going to make some extremely high strength to weight ratio tubing that way for the pilot's cage. And I hope you come back and watch those videos and we'll all learn a little bit more together. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not already a patron, uh, please go on over to my Patreon site and uh, uh, maybe you want to send me a little thank you for helping explore all of these processing methods and making them available to the general public so that they can use them in their own designs and uh, maybe give them a few ideas on what they can do. Uh, and uh, those thank yous would be most welcome and you'll help support the project and I'll keep moving along with this uh, new glider design and hopefully we can all learn something along the way and when we're done we have an amazing new aircraft hopefully. <laughs> Crush fingers, stick with me, bye for now.